Hey folks, Coach Patrick here from Endurance Nation over at www.endurancenation.us and this is part one of three of our out-season propaganda video series. Our way of getting the message of Endurance Nation out to the general public using video as our medium. Please forward this on to your friends and anyone who is under the spell of long, slow distance training being the path to Ironman and triathlon greatness. Um, in this first part of the series, I'm going to talk about what we consider a key concept of how we train inside Endurance Station, which is putting fast uh, first, and then putting far on top of that fast. So it's fast, then far, or you could think about putting far on top of fast. Okay? Uh, there's a couple different reasons why we do this. First and foremost, uh, the model of periodization as you understand it, as you've probably read in any number of books that exist out there in triathlon training and the topic, uh, is one where you put in a lot of aerobic miles, uh, you build what we call a base, um, then you start to add um, elements of resistance, be it hill training, muscular endurance training, as you go through build phases where you get um, a little more intense, you move from say zone one, zone two heart rate into zone two, some zone three time, um, and then eventually you peak out. Uh, and that peak time is when you're putting in your max hours and you're also doing some of the highest intensity you'll see all year, you taper and you race. Uh, and this entire process starts with you sitting down with a pencil and a paper uh, 365 days before your race and mapping out hours wise what you're going to do for the next 52 weeks of your year. Uh, which sounds insane and that's because it is. Uh, and the reason why that model doesn't work is because um, most of us as age group athletes simply do not have the time or bandwidth to put in the hours required um, and then to add on top of that the intensity required to see the development uh, that will lead to a great race day. Um, basically speaking, the majority of us have anywhere between 10 and 12 hours a week to train. Um, and then, you know, depending on weekend flexibility, how you've invested your time, you may have more. Uh, we, inside Endurance Station, have helped to solve that problem by only taking six to eight hours a week. That's six to eight hours a week in the out season to focus on making you fast. Why do we go fast in the out season? Because the weather is conducive to going fast. Short workouts are done because the conditions, your time outside is limited. It's dark outside early, it's dark outside late. You can't get outside. You're gonna be on the treadmill, or you're gonna be inside. Get it done, get out of there. Headspace, the number one mistake that beginners make when they get into triathlon is they think about the race from the day that they sign up until the day they actually do it. In our world, we know that you simply can't be focused on those numbers. What you need to be doing is building the foundation from which you'll be able to be strong on race day. And in our world, that strength comes working on two things power on the bike at threshold, pace on the run for speed. And that's it, okay? Uh, those are the two key metrics that you have. Um, it's easy to work on them in the out season when we're not competing with other races where you need to um, add volume, you need to taper, you need to recover. Uh, we're not competing with um, other, other similar life events um, that are involved in the summer. A lot of kids have summer commitments, you do vacations, everything. Uh, this is the winter time. Uh, it's not a lot of fun to be training right now. The last thing you want to be doing is spending four or five hours indoors watching um, movies as you spin along at 95 RPMs in zone one for five hours. Um, the majority of people detrain in the out season. They spend um, less time than they do in season doing the same intensity. And if you do less work, that's essentially less work, less work, then you're actually getting less fit. Um, you're more fit than if you stop training altogether, but uh, the only way that you can continue to do aerobic miles and see improvements across fitness is to increase the volume significantly. And as I mentioned earlier, most of us have a fixed number between 10, maybe 14 hours a week of training time. So if you're fixed, you can't add more hours. The only thing you can manipulate then is intensity. And that's what we do inside Endurance Nation. So we spend the bulk of our year, five months, five months, 20 weeks, of training you up to be as fast as you can be on the run and as strong as you can be on the bike. We take that fast and then when the weather turns nice in April, I unleash you on your training partners in the world to go out and do this longer distance training where I've taken um, the, the speed that you used to ride steady at all the time, call it 18 miles an hour. You spend all winter, five months, pounding that up to 19 and a half, 20 miles an hour. Now when I unleash you on your training partners and the general um, public who's unaware of your new fitness, um, your 18 and a half mile an hour steady pace is now what you do falling asleep and you're steady at 20 miles an hour. Uh, and you didn't do that by riding 
18 miles an hour till infinity. You did it by riding short, hard, intense sessions that built your strength on the bike. And then we took you out on the road and had you do that, transfer that strength into an endurance perspective. So inside our house, fast is what's important. Fast determines how far you, how far you can go in your training. Fast determines how fast you can go on race day. And those metrics are, again, to reiterate, simply put as power on the bike at threshold, pace at threshold on the run. That's all that we're worried about. Swimming is an added bonus, and we've put that into our training plans for this year. We've added some uh, new formatting. We've gone from 16 to 20 weeks because we saw the ridiculous results that people got in our out-season by the training that they did in-season. And we've added um, new guidance um, in the form of our swim ebook and some other resources for people um, to help make the out-season as powerful and effective as possible. As I mentioned, this is part one of three. Two more parts coming up. Please stay tuned. Watch your videos. Look for the next installment coming from Endurance Nation, but understand, uh, I say uh, with all humility that the Endurance Nation training plans for the out season are head and shoulders above the competition. You will not find plans built on the results of 500 athletes, real data results of 500 athletes in their fifth generation sold anywhere else. That's it for the real deal, Endurance Nation. Check it out, folks. Coach Patrick signing off, and I'll talk to you soon.